You know, we often ask what is on my device or whatever, but how often do we ask how is my device? Really makes you think. Hi y'all, it's Annalise, and in the past I have done a few like what's on my iPhone videos. I really like watching them because they're one, just like a really chill video to watch, but two, I get inspirations for how I want my device to be set up, maybe learning about some new apps that I might fall in love with, and I realized that it's not too often that you find a what's on my iPad video. So that's exactly what this is. I'm going to be showing you guys what I have on my iPad Pro here, and it's more of just like a casual, come explore my home pages and maybe will dive in deep into a couple apps with me. So if you're interested in what I have on my iPad Pro, how I have it laid out, and maybe some of my favorite iPad apps, go ahead and keep on watching. This is the 10.5 inch iPad Pro that came out in 2018. It is 256 gigabytes. I want to go ahead and get into the tour of my iPad, if you will. And I am going to be screen recording in landscape mode because that's how I most often use my iPad. I typically have it on the smart cover like this rolled up on my desk. And then sometimes when I want to write on it or draw on it, I lay it down. But rarely, rarely do I use my iPad up and down. And I don't believe I have any apps on my iPad. Okay. Okay, except one that only work in up and down mode. So this will be fine. It'll be a little bit different. Also my wallpaper I designed works in landscape the best. This is what it looks like. So my friends, I drew that, that the background thing, I made that. Anyway, okay, so put you there, let's go. And using the power of screen recording and editing and like moving my chair seven inches to the left, here is my iPad. Now, one thing I did wanna point out before we get started is that I have a lot of apps on my iPad and I use probably like less than five on a regular basis because I'm a big fan of the app experience. And so if there's an app that I've used in the past or I use like semi-frequently, like maybe it's like every couple of months I find myself needing this app because of how much storage I have available on my iPad, I would rather just have the app available because you never know when a good opportunity to use an app will come up, especially for an iPad because it's not quite a computer. So typically the app experience is a little bit of a better experience compared to like the web browser. And then also like utilities that you might need and then like you aren't on the internet so you can't access certain things. It's just like, why not just download a calculator app on your iPad and leave it there to never use. And then one day you're in a pickle and you're thanking your past self that you downloaded a stupid calculator app. Like that's what I'm talking about. So I am gonna go over like this tour of my iPad, touch on a few apps, really talk about the apps that I totally use. But by just looking at my iPad, you might get some inspiration on what you wanna put on your device. So keep that in mind, but getting started, let's go ahead and start in the Files app, which I do use a lot. I love the Files app. What I love about the Files app is I feel like it bridges the gap between tablet and computer. Like I have all of my tags from my computer that I've made. I also have my whole iCloud drive here. I also have access to Google Drive within the Files app, which is really cool. The only thing I don't like is that you can only have one Google Drive account synced and I have multiple Google Drives. I'm trying to consolidate it, but yeah, you can only have one. So that's a little bit of a bummer, but you can log in like a, a Dropbox, I believe. So you can have a whole bunch of different options, but you could get a downloads folder. It really makes it like a finder experience. It's a good app. Then we've got the calendar app maps. Of course, I have to have Google Drive because like I mentioned, I have like a whole bunch of different Gmail accounts, which I'm gonna have to blur all of this, but I use a whole bunch of different stuff. And so it, I, you know, this, this app does the job. I have no, I have no complaints about this app. Yep, it's good, it's functional. Then we have photos, camera. Oh, and then I forgot there's this little today view thing, which is the only place that you can have widgets on the iPad in iPad OS, which I've kind of got, gotten to liking. I've kind of gotten to liking, is that proper English? I've started liking the widgets on my iPhone. And I feel like on the iPad, it would be like perfect for it because of how much real estate you got going on here. But you can only have it in like the today view. And then as soon as you slide that away, th that's it. Anyway, so in my utilities folder, once again, a lot of apps that are just kind of there in case I need them, maybe in the future. When is the last time I opened the iTunes store app? When is the last time I needed to go into the iTunes store? I don't know, but let's just keep it just in case. I don't know. I love voice memos. I am a big user of voice memos. I I like getting the thoughts out of my head and sometimes I can't type them down and so I just speak them onto my and then I and then I just leave it as new recording 35 new recording 36 that's a bad habit that I have that I need to 
fix. Yeah, that's bad. Okay. Oh yeah, here's the stupid calculator app that I use. It has ads, which is extremely infuriating. At least it's a calculator app because Apple doesn't freaking make one. Get your stuff in order, Apple, please. Just take the, take the iPhone calculator app and put it on the iPad. I don't know. I'm not a developer, but I feel like that's an easy fix. Anyway. Okay, then we've got settings, app store, reminders, podcasts, FaceTime, Duolingo. If y'all are learning a language, go to Duolingo because they have one, they have so many languages. And I have learned so much through Duolingo. It is free. I technically have the plus version, but I'm just on the free trial that I'm going to cancel like I think tonight. But it's so great because it makes learning a language like a game. You have levels you have to get through. It's I've, I've just learned so much in the last year. I should make a whole video about Duolingo because I'm very passionate about it. If you're trying to learn a language, use Duolingo. Also, here's a life hack for you. Go to the Duolingo website instead of the app because you get unlimited lives on the desktop. The app is still great. Still use the app. Okay, moving on. So I have the Kindle app and the Books app because just if you get something on Kindle, you have to use their app. You can't put it in the Apple Books app. But what what I like about both of these apps is that they're pretty simple to use. I have no complaints. Uh, what I like about Kindle is that you can change the color of the pages, which I think you can do in both of them. You get a little bit of like a percentage guide of how much you have left of the chapter, or how much you're done with the whole book. You can change like the size of the fonts or the fonts in general. It, if you're a reader, it's a great app. I am not a e-reader as much. I do like a physical copy of a book, but here's another life hack for you. If you're in college and you need to have a textbook, check out renting it in an ebook form through like Kindle or something like that before you look into renting the physical copy because an iPad is so much lighter than a whole bunch of textbooks so you can have everything in one place. But two, in my personal experience, the book is always cheaper to rent in an ebook. There was like this big math book that I had that I ended up being about 40 bucks to rent for the semester through an ebook. And if I would have rented the physical copy of the book, I think it was about 80 or $90. So you can save a ton of money and also not have to worry about carrying around a whole bunch of books. So Kindle's nothing spectacular about it, but it's good. I like it. Um, books is very much the same type of thing. You can change the brightness of the screen. You can highlight things. I just don't think you can change the type of font. And maybe it's because that is, yeah, okay, that's technically a PDF. I don't think I have any actual, oh, this is a book. Nope, this is also considered a PDF. That's so funny. I didn't realize that because these are all books, but they're all technically PDFs. I don't have any books that I've bought from Apple, but I mean, I, I like the experience of going through this book that is technically a PDF because it's a play that I bought in like PDF form, but you can still like change things. Oh, you can do vertical scrolling. That's interesting. That's the first time I've seen that. But I like how you can flip through the pages of it. You can add bookmarks onto things. It's nice. I like using both. Then of course we have YouTube, YouTube Studio, the New York Times crossword, which I love the New York Times crossword. I'm not a huge fan of the app, but once again, what if I just only have my iPad and I just want to do some crosswords, you know? Then we have iMovie, which I want to do a video about like editing on my iPad and using my iPad as a content creator. And I used to only edit my videos with an iMovie. However, I haven't touched iMovie in like years. So, oh yeah, see, let's just, we're just gonna leave that. <laughs> Okay, then we've got pages, numbers. Uh, that's like the Apple Word and Excel. I use that a lot when it comes to my uh, YouTube channel, school, uh, my podcast, just a whole bunch of stuff. I thrive off of those two apps in particular. Use them all the time. I use pages like a note-taking app sometimes. And then moving on to the Patreon app, which if you didn't know, I have a Patreon, patreon.com slash Annalise. Consider supporting the channel. But this app is just not remarkable. I don't know. I don't know what I want from this app, but it's just not this. I am subscribed to one page. Patreon, and I guess it would be a good experience if I was a patron of somebody, but like as a creator, I, I don't know, it's, I don't, I don't, it's fine. It's, it's fine. I, I have it there once again, just in case. And then I have the Medium app, and then we have Skillshare, which I have recently put on my home screen because I may have accidentally bought a year premium membership to Skillshare. Things happen in a pandemic, and it, I, yeah, anyway, so I'm trying to get myself to actually use this, and there are a lot of great classes on here, and I do like the app experience. And I think if anything, having it on the home screen is gonna get me to use it more. Then we have like my doc down here. These are the apps that I use all of the time aside for like YouTube and YouTube Studio. So we have messages, mail, Safari. I, I'm a big Safari and mail person. You cannot get me to use Google Chrome. You can't. Then we have Apple Notes, which this, I, I love Apple Notes because it is just a easy to use, open up and start writing something app. Also another thing that I like about it is I do have the Apple Pencil 
If I just wrote a new note, soon as I touch my Apple Pencil to the screen, it's gonna know that I have it here. So now I do that and I can start writing, I can erase thing, I use a ruler, I guess, for some re, I don't know what that would, whoa, that's sick. Cool, I've never done that. <laughs> oh, and then that's the, this is the one where you can, uh, scribble is cool. The thing about an iPad is that I love the iPad experience, I really do, but I think something that just like takes it to the next level is the Apple Pencil. So if you have an iPad that is compatible with an Apple Pencil, get yourself one and change your life. Even if you aren't like an artist or like a student in school, I feel like, I don't know, it's just like the, it's like a stylus, it's like a Ferrari stylus. It, it does, does it do more? It does more. It does more than a stylus would. Maybe it's not a good example. I don't know, it's just really good and I, I like the Notes app. And then we come on to, I think my first or second favorite app. It's the one I've been using probably the longest out of like non-Apple related apps. And that is Notability, my pride and joy. Now, if you have seen my like favorite apps videos or my what's on my iPhone, you would know that I use Notability a lot. And I always say I use it the most on my iPad, which is true. There's a few reasons why I love this app. First, if you are note taking for any reason, a reason that I really liked note taking on my iPad is with uh, like a cheat sheet for my geography class. My professor let us have one one sided eight and a half by 11 or eight by 10 piece of paper, whatever the measurement is. And you got to write as much as you want, didn't matter what was on it, as long as it was only on one side, you can put whatever you wanted on it for any exam or test. So what I would do is I would make amazing notes, but I would zoom them in pretty freaking small. And I would go, okay, like here's the graph that I needed to show the, the seismic patterns and what I don't know. And then you zoom out and oh my gosh, I wrote so big, but look how tiny that is. And then I would just make this amazing, super filled eight and a half by 11 piece of paper and just absolutely crush it on the test. Cause I had this just amazing cheat sheet that our teacher let us had. I just used it to the best of my ability. But what I love about Notability is if I am putting a document on my iPad that I want to write on, that I need to edit, whether it's like a script for instance. So this is for a show that I was in, Lissa Strata, and I was able to use different highlighting tools to highlight lines. I could use a pen to make little notes to say where I was supposed to walk in, highlight my lines. And anytime I'm in a show, I always put a version of my script in Notability and take notes in here because one, I'll always have it with me because I'll always have my phone with me. I can access this wherever, but two, it just makes editing so nice and easy. But if you use PDFs and you have to edit them or no annotate them or whatever, Notability is your guy like get into it because it's absolutely great I love all the different colors I you know write video scripts in here sometimes too I'm not a huge fan of how things type out in Notability but it's a nice feature to have if you need it so moving on from Notability we have the music app and then we have my new favorite well not my new favorite I've loved it for a while but but I've really gotten into it in like the last year and a half or so and that is procreate now this is how I do a lot of things so <laughs> this is how I make uh, for instance this is how I make the wallpaper so I drew this and did some cool effects with it and then I inserted a whole bunch of images from my phone and I just kind of adjusted those nicely and then that's how I made my uh my iPad wallpaper or I have my hi y'alls if you see at the beginning of almost all of my videos over the, like the last year or so I write hi y'all in my handwriting like make sure the color matches for each video because you can do a really cool thing where you like make you can go into like this color selector and make sure the color is perfect or import a picture and hold your finger down and then pull a color from the picture. So I like to make it match the, the look of the video. I do so much stuff for my YouTube channel with Procreate, like my overlays, like the, the stupid, the stupid things I do, like turning a bag of Lay's chips into, cause I said an M1 chip and I don't, I'm so dumb. Or like uh, more interestingly, I have like this money gift that I made. It's dollar signs. So like stuff like this, I like trying to make my own graphics versus versus taking things off of Google, like this green check mark or this money sign or the disclaimer thing. You've probably seen a lot of things that definitely look handwritten and they're all from me. I've also loved doing photo doodles. Like uh, this is a fun one that I don't think I ever posted, but I love it so much. I need to post that on Instagram because it's just like a screen grab from a video. Uh, this one where my head's on the ground. You can do a lot of cool like Photoshop-esque things. Another doodle I did. Now this is just me showing you my little art gallery. I love this one that I did for my 2000 subscribers. So yeah, there's just a lot of cool things you can do with Procreate. You can do so many layers. You can have so many different like brushes. There's people on Etsy who sell brushes. There's somebody who made this brush or like if I move to red, let's change to, these are like texturing shading brushes for like my doodles and my drawings and stuff. That's something cool. I don't know. If you're an artist and you aren't using an iPad, like I would definitely
definitely recommend using it. Get yourself an Apple Pencil. If you if you have an iPad, like there, there's just so many cool things you can make. Uh, if you if you do any sort of lettering or digital art or whatever, you need to get yourself Procreate because it's like five bucks in the App Store, maybe 10, but it's worth every penny. Okay, now that we're done with the Procreate hour, let's move on to my next page here, which has a ton of folders and a ton of things I don't use that often, but I'm gonna show it to you anyway, just cause why not? Okay, so we've got an entertainment folder where I have all the 9,000 streaming services that I have that I haven't really used recently because I've been at home so much. If I'm watching something, I'm on my computer or my Apple TV. So there's that. Work, okay, so I have the Google My Business thing. I still don't entirely understand what it does, so I'm not even gonna touch that. But Teleprompter is really cool. It's this free app that uh, if you need a teleprompter for some reason for maybe a video you're doing or a project, you can just play a script you can edit it, you can change the speed. It's a good time and I've had to use it for some auditions that I've done. If you're an actor and you have an iPad, you need this app because it really helps when you're in a pinch and maybe you aren't able to memorize a whole piece, but you can read from a teleprompter. I don't know, I've used it a few times in like a little bit of a pickle where I couldn't memorize something and it's really great and it's free. I do have a folder for coding because that is something that I've always wanted to learn and I have played around with some of these. I actually just downloaded the Mimo one and the Code Academy, but I have done solo learn the most and I really do enjoy it, but that's something I'm really trying to focus on in the next year is getting better at coding. Then we'll have a games folder. I don't use a ton of these games because I don't often play games on my phone or I don't often play games on my iPad, but I have used Among Us, uh, but now it's on the Switch, so I don't use it that much. Yeah, it's, you know, you always gotta have a games folder. Then in tools, I just have a whole bunch of crap. So like Pulse from SoundCloud is for my podcast. I have Google Sheets because like I said, I use Google Drive a lot and there's a lot of people that I know that use like Google Sheets or Google Pages, Documents, Docs, yeah. And mainly for like when I do theater related things and I've just learned that on the phone and on the iPad, once again, it's a better app experience. I don't know why it took me so long to download it, but I finally did that. I've got Zoom on here, Google Authenticator when you're trying to like log into certain apps. Yahoo Weather is my weather of choice because that's what Apple Weather uses to get their weather stuff. So nothing really interesting. Then in education, I have Scholly, which is for applying to scholarships. Rosetta Stone which is something that I bought years and years and years ago. And I do have to say right now, I still like Duolingo better if you're getting started. But once you get into it, then invest in Rosetta Stone because it takes it a little bit further, gets things a little bit more technical. But Duolingo is a great starting place. Sign School is a free way to learn American Sign Language. So if you're trying to learn sign language, I definitely recommend downloading this. It's so, so great. And then Family Tree, I don't know why I have it here, but that's for like ancestry.com and family search. I don't know why I have that on my iPad. Okay, Music. Music Notes is cool because if you're a singer, musician, whatever, uh, let's see. So this is a sheet music that I bought, a sheet music, some sheet music. This is sheet music that I bought for an audition for a song that I was working on. You can flip through the pages, but a thing that I really like about it is that you can transpose it in the app as well as, and this is really great if you're practicing, you can, I'm gonna play it for like a second you can play the music and sing along to it. And I think you can change the speed. Yeah, you can even change the tempo. So what's nice about this is that if you don't have an accompanist, 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 a, a person playing the piano, the, the music with you to practice with, you can use your computer here. And it actually doesn't sound that bad. And then the piano app, in case if you need to do piano things, you can like scroll through the piano. Music, good stuff, it's, it's all good. Um, social media, I don't really use any of this stuff. And oh my gosh, if there's a pet peeve I have, it's that Instagram does not have an iPad app. Now I've wanted to delete it so many times, but the only reason why I have Instagram on my iPad, even though I mainly use my iPad in a horizontal mode anyway, is because of to get color palettes. So there's this account I follow called Topia Tones and I just go in here and go, oh, I really like that. Take a screenshot of it and then I use it in Procreate, oh, hello. And then I use it in Procreate to get color palettes that I want, it, that's about it. Photo and video, we have Pixelmator and Afterlight. In shopping, that I should probably just not even have on here because that's just another way and reason for me to spend money that I don't have, but you know, Redbubble, Target, Etsy, Amazon, Apple Store, and Shop Disney are the only ones I have on here. And then the last two apps I have are both new to me apps. Uh, the first one is Good Notes. And there's this content creator, her name is Gabby Whiten, and she made like a, is it a bullet journal? 
She made something that I guess only works within GoodNotes or she prefers to use it in GoodNotes. I think it's, it was like a bullet journal thing and I was really interested in it, but I had never used GoodNotes before. So I kind of wanted to try it out. And the thing I like about it that I don't know if Notability does because I haven't tested it out yet is that you can have the bullet pages. It's so far, it's fine. It's not something that I've gravitated towards yet, but I did like using it when I was working on my grad school monologues because I kind of was able to flip through them a little bit different. Sometimes swiping is better than scrolling for me. I wish there was a bigger grid of colors here, but you kind of have to do a little bit more of a step to get through things. I think the thing I like about it too is that you can have these like different notebooks, which I guess would be considered your documents, but not really. I don't know. If you don't like Notability, but you like the general concept of it, try GoodNotes. I'm still trying to decide how I feel about it, but it's fine. And then this app Craft, I literally downloaded last night and it's supposed to be like Notion. If you've ever heard of Notion, it's a uh, note taking, brainstorming, storyboard type of app. I don't know. I can't really get into it. Not like, I can't really get into it. I can't really talk about it. Like I, I've tried it and it just, it's too much for me, but craft seemed to be something like that. Like I said, I downloaded it last night. I'm giving this app too much promo for knowing essentially nothing about it. But with that being said, that is everything on my iPad. Okay, I wanna shift back over there, but I like doing the transition, so. It's such a fun transition to do. Like you cannot not love snapping and then appearing in somewhere else. It's a good time. So that's what's on my iPad, which like I said, it's not really something that people talk about a lot. I feel like sometimes people talk very specifically about an iPad, but I like doing some general iPad videos. I feel like the iPad goes often overlooked. I think I talked about this in my iPad, like should you get an iPad in 2020 the video that I did last year. I love the iPad. I wanna do some more iPad related videos and just kind of showing the iPad a lot more love than it gets right now. And I felt like a great starting point for that was just kind of like showing you just what's on my iPad, a basic what's on my iPad. And then we'll get into how I use my iPad and like the other ideas that are in the old noggin over here. But if you have any ideas or things you would like to hear or see from me about the iPad, whether it be how I use it, my favorite apps or something else that I'm not thinking about, please let me know in a comment down below because I love seeing y'all's suggestions or request from me because it it makes me feel so like of course it's great to get ideas from people and like know what people want to see but it's really cool when people leave suggestions and then I go oh somebody wants to hear from me like they want to see that from me so if there's anything you want to see from me I would be more than happy to make it let me know <laughs> but anyways thanks for hanging out with me this was a fun little sit and chit chat and scroll through my iPad and see actually how many how many apps do I have oh I have 101 apps. That's a lot. But uh, that is it for me. Stay beautiful, have a marvelous day, and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye. Bye. I gotta like, bye. I gotta like, bye. bye. I gotta like harmonize that. Bye. bye. That'd be so fun. Okay, bye.